Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Libra New Moon solar eclipse at 10 degrees, 4 minutes on October 2nd, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connect with a multidimensional view of the the universe and what is influencing us at this solar eclipse from a galactic perspective. What you will receive in this video are three energetic themes that I've pulled out for the solar eclipse chart. And also at the end, you will receive three questions should you want to integrate this solar eclipse energy some more. This solar eclipse is a directional one. There is some guidance to us within this solar eclipse. And of course, we're going to walk through all of that in one of the themes coming up. But I want to say that uh, this solar eclipse in particular is a new beginning, uh, following a very much karmic release energy of the lunar eclipse we just had on September 17th. This a new moon that it is, is associated with a direction forward guidance to us that is available to us to consider moving forward now, stepping into the fourth quarter of 2024, but also in very important months in the first half of 2025 and beyond. The ruler of this solar eclipse is Venus. Venus is conjunct the fixed star Acrux in the Crux constellation. And this is also a very feminine energy. So part of the guidance here is uh, through Venus's conjunction with uh, Acrux. We also have the solar eclipse squaring Lyra Alatfar at 10 degrees of Capricorn. This is also part of the guidance, part of the direction, but it may be a little bit of a growth opportunity involved because of this square to the solar eclipse. And we're going to walk through all of this in the three themes that are coming up. Last time we had a solar eclipse at this degree, 10 degrees of Libra, was 19 years ago in 2005. So this may be also a uh, closing of a cycle for you, a 19-year cycle that um, sometimes it helps to kind of, what did I do in 2005? But also this may be uh, a second go around of something that you now are much wiser. Uh, you've learned a lot of things in 19 years. So now this time at 10 degrees of Libra, there is a new start of something. The next solar eclipse we're going to have at 10 degrees of Libra will be in 300 years. So clearly this is uh, potentially also a start of a new era of some sort. And at least when it, with regards to solar eclipses at 10 degrees of Libra. Also, this directional character of this solar eclipse comes from the north node, south node axis, which is Aries Libra. So the south node is pretty much conjunct this solar eclipse and the north node, of course, opposite in Aries there. This solar eclipse is speaking of that in our daily lives, there are multiple things that we come across that are illusions, that are um, seem fascinating or compelling. And so often we take them in and make them ours. But this is happening at a very shallow level. So when it comes to trends, for example, or illusions that we may desire, our ego may desire, and if we attach to that, it becomes uh, more of a a shallow, um, the, it doesn't come with any depth, if I put it that way. And what does that create? It creates emptiness. It creates uh, a hollow um, structure within ourselves if we um, continuously attach to illusions or trends or wanting something that uh, may not have any substance. 
And this is a very important message of this solar eclipse that we are on our way as in evolution to go deeper, to go deeper, to unearth who we truly are as a human being, uh, our soul, and not just a body <laughs> in a um, flesh suit, right? But who we truly are energetically. And this is a, a long process for many. For, for many, it is a um, combination between experiencing things in the physical world, but also tapping into the spiritual world to merge the two. So this um, solar eclipse is very much a directional one in that sense that there is more to every one of us to find out and dig deeper in that feels like home. Because this weight that we may feel is often placed there by ever-changing uh, new things to look at. This solar eclipse is speaking to um, spiritual guidance around our calling, our destiny. And with this solar eclipse, we come into a process to get closer to that. So there is a reason that true Lilith, Maki Maki, Estrella, and the South Node are, and Mercury are together uh, with this solar eclipse, this new moon, uh, to make that statement that now is the time, now is a new beginning, a new cycle to uh, start to shave off this um, shallow um shell, if you will, that many of us are very attached to and start, and instead start to fill our inner world with things that we love, things that we are passionate about, that we discover about ourselves. This is a solar eclipse that speaks to that there is a life beyond illusion. This solar eclipse is also speaking to how easy it is to attach to temptations. And Lil true Lilith is here to help guide this um, deep underworld type of energy that we need to unearth to be able to see ourselves in the light that we truly are, which is unconditional love. And Lilith's work here together with the South Node is so important to help release the illusions, the imagery, the shallow uh, trends that are coming and going and is not really defining us of who we truly are. But now is the time to be considering going within to unearth that deep, deep love, the uh, connection we have to it all, because that, that's really what we are at the end of the day. And more about this directional sense of this solar eclipse uh, I speak about in the theme three. So I have a little announcement that I'm working on the 2025 Galactic Astrology forecast. And within this forecast, you will we'll see that I have uh, the key themes of the year from a galactic perspective. And I'm excited to uh, share that with you sometime in October. So before we move on, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are for this solar eclipse. The first theme is breakthrough of limiting patterns. And here we're going to talk about more about the Lyra Alathfar square to the solar eclipse. The second theme is divine feminine, divine masculine balance. And here we're going to talk more about the ruler Venus of this solar eclipse and her conjunction to uh, the fixed star Acrux. We also have a grand water trine that is so beautiful. So we'll talk more about that in theme two. The third theme is eclipse spiritual guidance and here we'll talk more about the directional uh, sense of this solar eclipse and here we're going to talk about orion bellatrix and beta centauri hadar so let's take a look at the solar eclipse chart next 
So here we have the solar eclipse chart and you can see there 10 degrees, four minutes of Libra. The sun and the moon are together there. And as you can see, there's a whole cluster of placements associated with the sun and the moon there. It's Mercury, it's South Node, Astraea, Maki Maki, True Lilith. So yeah, there's a lot going on there at that 10, uh, 11 degree point. Now, we also have this square to Lyra Alathfar at 10 degrees of Capricorn. We also have Sirius conjunct Lyra Alathfar. And this square is a powerful growth opportunity that is directional. And we'll talk much more about this in theme one coming up. The ruler, as you can see here, is at 11 degrees of Scorpio conjunct the fixed star A crux in the crux constellation at 12 degrees of Scorpio. So the feminine energy present here in this solar eclipse is very much um, a guiding force as well. And Venus conjunct Acrux there has an element of justice to it. And we'll talk more about that in uh, theme two coming up. So this solar eclipse is a femininely directed solar eclipse with Venus as the ruler in Scorpio, which is a very deep sign conjunct Acrux, which has to do with justice. And as we move in now to the next energetic theme, the first one, breakthrough of limiting patterns. We're going to talk about all of the dynamics around the new moon placements first, and then that square to Lyra Alathfar. So let's dive into the first theme that I've called breakthrough of limiting patterns. So here we have the first theme that I've called Breakthrough of Limiting Patterns. And how fitting uh, is this title? Because we have this group of placements around and associated with the new moon solar eclipse. If we start first with the south node there at six degrees of Libra, the south node is a release of karma, but it's also a point of connection to something that's very familiar. And it's more at the soul level. The south node brings in what our talents and gifts are from past lives. Uh, so the way we can look at the south node, that it's both a release of uh, the past, things that are not serving us anymore in this life, but also an opportunity, a portal to connect with deep uh, knowledge and wisdom that we brought into this life. Mercury's placement here is a activator for starting to listen to our inner voice and become aware of how we speak to ourselves. Mercury's presence here is key because Mercury is also a um, versatile communicator. So it is about being able to see uh, and listen to ourselves 360, not to only the negative channels, but also how we can expand on speaking with more love to uh, uh, ourselves. Estrella's placement here at 10 degrees, exact degree uh, of the solar eclipse is a very directional one. Estrella is associated with justice. It is associated with breaking karmic patterns so that we can live a simpler life. Estrella is associated with balancing energy, but also breaking patterns that are not serving us. This is a very much a sense of justice as well. And uh, also in conjunction with the solar eclipse here, it's a statement. And also, as you can see, true Lilith is here at 10 degrees of Libra as well. True Lilith is uh, associated with this unrestricted feminine energy that often our true self is part of. It's a creative energy, but it's also willing to go to the depths of the um, underworld within ourselves uh, so, so that we can unearth what it is really that we want to release, but also to connect with deep, deep wisdom. 
Maki Maki at this solar eclipse is a lot about our nervous system. That's how I interpret Maki Maki's presence here, because we are bound to become more aware of our impulses. What is it that we are actually following, not only with regards to speech and how we speak to ourselves that Mercury is here to help us with. Maki Maki is here to uh, connect us with our own nervous system and how we can uh, be in charge of that and be more aware, the consciousness around how we actually run energy. So this group taken together is a big statement uh, and holds the messages of this solar eclipse for us. Now let's take a look at the opposition. In opposition to the solar eclipse is, of course, the North Node at six degrees of Aries, but also we have dwarf planet Salacia, also part of the Kuiper Belt objects that is providing us with a unifying uh, energy. And Salacia conjunct the North Node here is a direction forward. Salacia stands for a union between Venus and Mars type of energy, divine feminine, divine masculine energy. So it's a very balanced, higher frequency energy. And Salacia conjunct the North Node here. That is a direction forward. That is a message around what we are stepping into next as we are finding this true self, our soul essence and connecting with it uh, within. And lastly, as part of this energetic theme, that breakthrough of limiting patterns, we may have to look at Lyra Alatfar there at 10 degrees of Capricorn conjunct Cirrus at 11 degrees of Capricorn. This T-square is a guiding one. And Lyra Alathar is associated with energy around music, with frequency, high vibrating um, frequency. And also healing modalities associated with sound and frequency. Now, Cirrus conjunction to Lyra Alathfar, Cirrus stands for how we are nurturing ourselves, how we can harvest the good out of life. So Cirrus is also part of this directional uh, message that the more we nurture ourselves through music, vibration, in an environment that we harmonize with can also be interpreted like that, the more we can also grow. And this T-square, I always interpret T-squares as growth opportunities, and it links together those messages all together at the solar eclipse. I also want to mention that North Node is still conjunct Alpha Reticulum, and Alpha Reticulum is associated with futuristic energy, almost like energy that comes from the future here to be a guiding force. So North Node is very much in a futuristic state at this uh, at this time, at the solar eclipse, giving us a flavor of what's to come. So the question is, how can you connect more with that song, that inner song, that inner music within yourself, as opposed to um, focusing on perhaps illusions or temptations or uh, things that you want, but is not really within reach uh, because it's an image, an illusion. So here I have highlighted the Kuiper Belt. And for those who are not familiar with what Kuiper Belt objects are, they are a series of objects, dwarf planets that are orbiting beyond Neptune's uh, orbit. And it's said that the Kuiper Belt objects are part of helping to guide us forward on our uh, evolutionary path, helping to connect us with higher frequency energy. And I wanted to highlight the Kuiper Belt here today, just in, as far as where it's situated to our other planets in the solar system here. So here we have Maki Maki, Lilith, Cirrus, and Astrea, which are part of the energy signature of this solar eclipse. Maki Maki is the higher octave of Uranus. It's the um, bringing in a awareness around 
consciousness around systems. And this can also be a uh, systems such as astrology, such as um, nervous system, and how we run energy, for example, Lilith is the deep feminine energy that also can go in the underworld to um, help us expel things that we have attached to that we know that no longer serves us. Astrea brings in the justice that it's time now to break some karmic patterns that are not serving us, but also promote a simpler life, coming more into balance. Astrea is a healer in that sense. And Cirrus, who is an energy that is associated with nurturing and if it's directed to self, which it is in this case, um, it's that inner nurturing and combined with Lyra Alathar that we're going to talk about next is uh, this inner song that we are uh, guided and uh, invited to nurture. And then the squares to, that builds the T-square is pointing to Lyra constellation and Alatfar at the top there that I've highlighted. Alatfar is associated with music, light language, and frequency. So this is the growth opportunity that we are asked to move more towards using in connecting with our true self, our soul essence, um, as opposed to uh, logical logic means such as uh, our mind. And if you have personal planets such as Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, Mercury in the 10 degree um, vicinity of Libra, Capricorn, and Aries, you may feel this solar eclipse stronger. And also you may be encouraged to release some of the limiting patterns that you have been maintained so far. This is a door opening to uh, release that and welcome in a lighter energy within you. And here we have Salacia and Alpha Reticulum, which is associated with the opposition to the solar eclipse here in Aries. And this gives us a uh, view of future energy, that unified uh, masculine, feminine energy, Mars, Venus together in balance, but also the uh, association to a higher frequency through Alpha Reticulum. So here we have Acrux, the ruler of this solar eclipse. Venus is conjunct the constellation Crux and the fixed star Acrux. And Acrux particularly is a very uh, expansive energy is associated with the energy of justice and sacrifice specifically around sacrificing our ego. So the Venus Acrux combination here is a very directional piece as well, uh, ruling this solar eclipse, uh, that it's an opening to letting go of our patterns that are run by the ego. So this is the T-square again, that is so powerful and giving us direction that there is an opportune time here now in beginning of October, an invitation to breaking limiting patterns that we have perhaps maintained over time that has become so familiar, but in the process, we have lost who we truly are, lost that connection. And now it's the time to open that door and let those uh, energies go as opposed to inviting a more unified, balanced, simple energy associated with um, Salacia there. So this solar eclipse has an element of justice to it. And often that is when we stand in front of ourselves and asking ourselves, do I like who I am? And do I like who I, I have become? This is a new door opening to step more into who we truly are and align more with our soul essence and the higher frequency that is going to flavor the next couple of months, but in particular, the next year and beyond. 
All right, let's take a look at the second energetic theme that I called divine feminine, divine masculine balance. So here we have the second theme that I called divine feminine, divine masculine balance. And I'll walk you through what I see here. The ruler of this solar eclipse, Venus, at 11 degrees of Scorpio, conjunct Acrux there at 12 degrees of Scorpio, is the feminine energy bringing in that sense of justice, that there is part of us that is willing to sacrifice the illusion. Venus, as the ruler of this solar eclipse, is in trine with Mars, the, the masculine, at 15 degrees of Cancer, conjunct Canis Major, Sirius A, at 14 degrees of Cancer. This is a flowing energy between the masculine and the feminine. Sirius A is associated with wisdom keeping and grounded communication and also healing abilities. And the balance here between Venus and Mars in this water grand trine is obvious. But also what we have another trine that builds this water trine is Saturn at 14 degrees of Pisces conjunct Eridanus Archenar at 14 degrees of Pisces. This is where the lessons are flowing in. This is a, a water grand trine in full um, emotion, in full intuition going here between Saturn, Venus, and Mars. And Saturn is the director here of what we are here to learn. And I see this energy as very much uh, the process it takes to get to the energy of Salasia, which is the, the fully merged, uh, integrated balance between masculine and feminine energy. So the message here at this uh, time now at the solar eclipse is that it is uh, time for us to release our attachments that the ego makes up uh, and dive into our wisdom and take action on it. Mars's uh, energy contribution here is that there is an action portion to it that we are now asked to step into that grounded wisdom that resides within. And Saturn conjunct Eridanus Archenar. Archenar at 14 degrees of Pisces is associated with spiritual evolution, and uh, particularly. And Saturn is really diving into and, and connecting with Eridanus constellation at this time over a long time so that we also get the benefits from this process and the lessons that it brings. As part of this theme also around feminine, masculine balance uh, in terms of energy, we also have a minor grand trine. And this is also involving Venus and Acrux there as the ruler of this solar eclipse. It involves Saturn, Eridanus Archenar as well, but also Lyra Vega, which is uh, at 15 degrees of Capricorn opposite Canis Major, Sirius A, at 14 degrees of Cancer. And Lyra Vega is the feminine um, part of spiritual wisdom. Lyra Vega is associated with the feminine uh, spiritual wisdom and also um, healing practices associated with um, the feminine part, which is more receptive of healing practices. So this kite that this builds is also a uh, statement of this solar eclipse that leaning into our wisdom within, uh, either through vibration, through music, through light language, it speaks to our soul. And Lyra Vega is a key element as part of guiding this awakening around healing modalities and how we use them in our modern world next in the future. So here I want to show you Sirius, uh, which is a dual star system, Sirius A and B. Sirius B uh, is at 7 degrees of Cancer, and Sirius A is at 14 degrees of Cancer. They're, they're very close to each other uh, on the sky map here, so they only come up as one star. 
And the other is Lyra Vega there in the Lyra constellation at 15 degrees of Capricorn. Both of these fixed stars are associated very closely to human galactic heritage. Uh, many of us who are incarnated now have soul memories of uh, soul incarnations in both of these star systems. And, and what we're working with here is to unearth wisdom and knowledge, intuitive knowledge of healing modalities that our soul is very familiar with and that we're bringing into form here in this incarnation on Earth. So this theme of energetic balance is... Uh, also a directional one for the future in the sense that there is also a desire for our soul to always be in balance. And this is also our invitation here to assess where in my life, what area of my life do I feel imbalance? What can I do to come back to harmony and come back to balance to a greater extent in my life? And that is not only in our external world, but primarily also in our inner world. And this solar eclipse is very much speaking of that we all have healing abilities. We, we all have soul memories that builds our soul essence, things that we don't have to learn or read in a book or, or take a course to actually know. It is about unearthing and connecting with this intuitive, innate talent and gift that we all have. And this water grand trine at the solar eclipse is beautiful flowing energy that we are uh, invited to align with. So next, let's take a look at the third energetic theme that I called Eclipse Spiritual Guidance. So here we have the third theme that I called Eclipse Spiritual Guidance. And it's a fact that we now only have a couple of months left of 2024. And when I look at 2025, this minor grand trine is also going to play uh, a significant role. This what you see on the screen here is that long-term foundational energy that is guided and held in place by the outer planets. Pluto conjunct Lyra Alatfar uh, at zero degree of Aquarius, and Pluto is now back in uh, Capricorn at 29 degrees of, of Capricorn. And Neptune at 28 degrees of Pisces uh, conjunct Pegasus sheet at 29 degrees of Pisces. And then we have Uranus at 26 degrees now uh, of Taurus, conjunct Perseus Algol at 27 degrees of Taurus. All of these outer planets are in retrograde, which also invites us to um, view this evolution from an inward perspective, go within. All of these outer planets are in retrograde, and it may give us guidance around that this is an inner transformation that we are uh, going through at this time. The role of this minor grand trine is to help us put a new foundation in place for the future. This minor grand trine will be highlighted significantly in 2025 due to the shifts of Saturn and Uranus going into new signs, uh, Aries and Gemini, respectively. And I'll talk a lot more about these shifts in the 2025 Galactic Astrology Forecast that I will be offering soon in October. And what we also notice is that this minor grand trine is currently in the very late degrees of respective signs here in the third deacon. And in addition to the minor grand trine and the planets associated with those, we also have Jupiter and Chiron in the third deacon. Uh, all of the other placements of this solar eclipse is in first or second deacon. 
And just as a reminder, the first deacon, the first 10 degrees of each sign is associated with the physical, the body. The second deacon, the degrees 10 to 19 is associated with the mental body. And the third deacons between 20 and 29 degrees is the spiritual body. So where is the spiritual guidance here at this solar eclipse? Well, so here we have a sextile between Jupiter and Chiron. Jupiter at 21 degrees of Gemini conjunct Orion Bellatrix at 21 degrees of Gemini and Chiron there at 21 degrees of Aries. This is also a guiding force uh, in the third deacon at this solar eclipse. So let's take a look at this a little bit in the deeper. As mentioned before, Jupiter is in Gemini here to unearth our awareness of past lifetimes and soul incarnations in the Orion constellation. And Jupiter is progressing here uh, at this solar eclipse conjunct Orion Bellatrix at 21 degrees of Gemini. Bellatrix is associated with achievement and very focused, organized energy. And Jupiter here is... Uh, expanding our need to uh, get our things in order. And also Chiron here at 21 degrees of Aries and forming a yod to Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio here. This is a clear direction to focus on love. Beta Centauri Hadar is associated with unconditional love, but also with healing, with using a harmony and frequency to heal. And again, we have a yod pointing to the sign of Scorpio, where the ruler of this solar eclipse, Venus, is placed. So here we have the Crux constellation, uh, Beta Centauri Hadar on one uh, image there and Orion Bellatrix on the other. And as you can see, Orion Bellatrix is associated with that raised arm uh, aiming for a direction. Uh, so that's very telling at this solar eclipse. There is some sort of directional uh, aim here. And where is it aiming at? Well, it's aiming at the sign of Scorpio, where the ruler of the solar eclipse, Venus, is in conjunction with uh, the cross crux constellation at 12 degrees of Scorpio, but also Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio there. So it tells us that the direction of where we're going is very much to aim for a um, loving, a giving, a um, mystery. Uh, uh, crux is associated with mystery as well, not just justice, but it's the whole divine feminine um, unseen world that is within us. This uh, third deacon guidance is at the spiritual level, at the soul level. And what is it that we are aiming for? What is, uh, in the spiritual sense, we can set intentions for that aim. Uh, so what are your intentions at this solar eclipse? What are you aiming for? What are you welcoming into your life next? This is... Uh, beautiful directional yod that is pointing to Beta Centauri Hadar that is associated with giving, receiving, and in love, harmony, energy, frequency, and unconditional love. So you are invited to set your intentions with that backdrop. We're getting a little glimpse of what's to come, what the energetic direction is for 2025 as part of this solar eclipse. We're moving towards a more harmonized, unified energy. We're asked to come more and more uh, into our own skin, into our relating to who we truly are and bring it out. Uh, outside of ourselves, not from within and out. We are asked to detach from uh, illusions, 
we're asked to detach from illusions or fleeting trends uh, that we have put, perhaps felt are more important in the past than what they are now. And now, now is the time to break those patterns that are still uh, feeling like they're limiting us. And, and these limiting patterns, we may not be conscious of. So this solar eclipse is asking us to go within and sit with us ourselves to unearth some of those things that are yet to be uh, known to ourselves. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this solar eclipse energy some more? The first question is, what are some of the limiting patterns that you are still maintaining? And this can be quite difficult to unearth because how do I know if they're limiting me? One way of working with self-awareness is to notice how you feel, how you feel when you are thinking about something that you are maintaining in your life, whether it's a certain routine that you have had for years, but it really does not feel like it's doing anything for you. So if you feel that a pattern in your life is contracting you, it, it makes you feel uh, not excited or it feels that you have to contract in some form. That is often a limiting pattern. On the other hand, if there is an expanding pattern in your life, it makes you feel lighter. It, uh, this is also something that we may not walk around and think of every day, but this is a great time during this solar eclipse to invite yourself to examine what are some of the routines and patterns that I maintain? Are they serving me or are they not? So what is one pattern that you is not serving you that you'd like to let go of? The second question is, what is your balance between masculine and feminine energy in your life? And how do we uh, assess that? One way of looking at it is how we are taking action, which is very masculine energy. It's associated with Mars, right? Forward we go versus how do we rest? How do we receive, uh, which is Venus, which is feminine energy? And if you take a, a scan, an um, objective scan of your life, how many hours of your day, for example, are you on the go or taking action, giving your energy uh, out to the world versus resting, rejuvenating, and taking responsibility for that part? Uh, and if you sense an imbalance there, it might be an opportunity here at the solar eclipse to take action, be decisive, uh, make a decision, Orion Bellatrix, right, to uh, unearth a um, balance that works for you. Uh, so in terms of living a balanced life in harmony frequency, we have the opportunity at this solar eclipse to assess where we are in that balance between masculine, feminine energy and take a, make a decision. The third question is, what are your intentions for this solar eclipse? What would you like to welcome into your life the next couple of months, the rest of 2024? Because when we look into 2025, that's a whole new energy. Uh, but what are your intentions? What do you want to welcome into your life uh, the next three months, let's say? How is this going to help you come closer to embracing that soul essence of yours, your true self energy. Lastly, I want to come back to Astraea. Astraea is conjunct to the degree to this solar eclipse at 10 degrees of Libra. And Astraea is a uh, energy that is helping us to stay consistent, to stay uh, with our intentions, to stay with what we have set out to uh, do at the soul level. Astraea is here to uh, help us support our good judgment and the clarity around what serves us versus what doesn't. Astraea is associated with energy to help us endure difficult uh, periods of time with hope. 
We have an interesting couple of months ahead of us and an even more interesting 2025. So I invite you to uh, download my Galactic Alignments reference guide and to make sure that you receive this offer once I'm making it available to everyone. Thank you everyone for your beautiful comments on my videos. I so appreciate each one of you that are here uh, learning more about together with me, uh, galactic astrology and how it influences us at this time. So this is the Libra solar eclipse galactic astrology reading. And thank you so much for listening and watching New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Visit me on ulrikasullivan.com. I would love to uh, connect with you. Thank you so much again, and I can't wait to come back with another one. Bye.